Welcome to this very special edition of Razorback Reels. I'm Riley Atkinson. And I'm Elena Thompson. Thank you for joining us. The 95th Annual Academy Awards took place this past Sunday, and we here at Razorback Reels are massive fans of Hollywood's biggest night. We'll be breaking down all the fashion, drama, winners, and losers of the night. After two broadcasts affected by the pandemic, this past Sunday was one of the first Oscars that brought back that same awards show spirit. Host Jimmy Kimmel was back with his hit or miss jokes and sarcastic remarks on the runtime of the broadcast. Last year, the Academy chose to not air all of the categories. This was met with backlash, and so this year, all 24 categories were awarded during the show. This year's movies were back in theaters and every film was fighting to come out on top. One movie dominated the box office and the Oscars, taking home seven of the 11 nominations it received. We have Razorback Reels reporter Drew Chamberlain in studio to tell us about this wonderfully weird winner. Thanks, Riley. Now, I don't think there's a person more ecstatic about everything everywhere all at once sweeping the majority of major categories at this year's Academy Awards. Everything everywhere all at once winning seven out of the 11 categories it was nominated for is a major accomplishment. It's not often that we see a movie take home multiple statuettes in one night, so seven is in insane. Starting off, Everything Everywhere won Best Editing, a much-deserved and super critical category in the movie's success. Making it all the more impressive uh, is the film was entirely edited by five people, two of which were Daniel Kwan and Daniel Sheenert, the film's directors. We witnessed the greatest comeback in Hollywood history with Ki Hoi Kwan winning Best Supporting Actor after a 37-year hiatus from movies. His acceptance speech had me on the verge of tears. Ki is just genuinely a perfect human being, and seeing him reunite with his Indiana Jones family, including Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford, just tore me to pieces. In Best Supporting Actress, both Stephanie Hsu and Jamie Lee Curtis were nominated for Everything Everywhere. And while, in my opinion, Stephanie Hsu put in the more Oscar-worthy performance, Hollywood and Scream Queen royalty Jamie Lee Curtis getting an Oscar is much deserved after her lifelong contribution to movies. Michelle Yeoh received Best Actress against a stacked nomination list, but I'm thrilled to see that she is making Oscar history by being the first ever Asian woman to win the award. Everything Everywhere's directors, the Daniels, both received three Oscars in one night for Best Original Screenplay, Best Directing, and Best Picture. The, the Daniels' second ever film after Swiss Army Man beat out massive contenders in each category. For example, Daniels, who are considered relatively new incomers to the industry, beat Steven Spielberg in directing. That's got to feel pretty good. While Everything Everywhere is not the greatest film of all time, it was a refreshing, exciting, and unforgettable experience that audiences needed. For Razorback Reels, I'm Drew Chamberlain. The 95th Academy Awards provided numerous milestones to the Asian filmmaking community. Representation in Hollywood recently has met a turning point, and notable, notable progress has been made last Sunday. Let's go to Razorback Reels reporter Noah Kim to tell us more about these historic victories. Thanks, Elena. I want to talk about the win streak that the Asian actors, songwriters, and filmmakers had at the Oscars last Sunday. These wins are the culmination of a building momentum in the Asian arts. Let's take it back to 2019, where the first ever foreign language film had won Best Picture. This movie was Parasite, directed by Korean filmmaker Bong Joon-ho. The following year, Chinese filmmaker Chloe Zhao swept the Best Picture and Director categories with her feature film, Nomadland. These accomplishments symbolize the breaking down of cultural barriers across the medium of film. American audiences today finally recognize the unique appeal of the Asian movie scene. Now let's move on back to present day. In the South Asian sphere, RRR won the best original song for Natu Natu, beating out the incomparable Rihanna and Lady Gaga. This is the first ever Oscar awarded to an Indian feature film. M.M. Kiravani sang his acceptance on stage. And in the short documentary category, we have the Elephant Whisperers, shot entirely out of South India, taking home an Oscar. The director, Kartiki Gonzalez, stressed the importance of indigenous communities and their connection to the natural world. These Desi wins are hopefully just the beginning, though. Bollywood, Tollywood, and Kollywood films are stylishly produced and abundant in quality. It is clear that the film Everything Everywhere All at Once was of course the main vehicle for Sunday's historic East Asian victories. This movie had a whopping 11 nominations, and as previously mentioned, the filmmakers got to walk away with seven gold statues. Uh, Ki Hui Kwan, uh, his victory in the Best Supporting Actor category cemented his meteoric comeback. Teary-eyed and thankful, Kwan made his story clear. 
His upbringing in a refugee camp emphasized this emotional moment. Quan, of course, thanked his mother during his speech. Now, of course, moving over to Michelle Yao, she is the next Asian actor whose win will be remembered for years. Yao's Best Actress win made her the first Asian woman to win the category in Academy history. Her speech reminded the audience that prejudices against race and gender can be overcome through tenacity and grit. She wants this win to be a beacon of hope for the coming generations of actors. Yao, of course, thanked her mother during her speech. Now, Everything Everywhere All at Once also cleaned up on the production side of categories. The Daniels, comprised of Daniel Scheinert and Daniel Kwan, won Best Directing alongside Best Picture. Daniel Kwan, who is of Chinese and Taiwanese descent, also thanked his mother. Are you all seeing a common denominator here? Nevertheless, the 95th Academy Awards will be a hot topic throughout all of the regular Asian gatherings. Hopefully, this representation starts a movement and not a fad. Thank you for listening, and of course, I got to thank my mom for all the work she put in to get me here today. Razorback Reels, mom, I made it. I'm Noah Kim. The Razorback staff, the Razorback Reels staff, is elated to see the continuation of these acclaimed filmmakers' careers. Hopefully, future Academy Awards continue to spotlight films from all types of diverse backgrounds. So. Going back to Everything Everywhere All at Once, Riley, it is really, truly a must-see movie, as yeah. I'm sure you've gathered okay, from Drew I, it's and Noah's. It's on my list now. Yes, it's so good, and it's yes. really impressive, and the main actress's performance is genuinely insane. It's so good, and it's so amazing that we're really diversifying in Hollywood. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a reassuring thing to see that there's progress being made. All right, um, coming up, we are going to turn our attention away from the movies and focus on some red carpet fashion. Stay tuned. The Academy Awards is not only a night to celebrate the best of cinema, but the best of fashion, too. In the 1960s, the red carpet made its Oscars debut. The 1964 awards was the first time that broadcasters chose to film the celebrities making their entrance to the awards show. This moment in broadcast history has cemented the Academy Awards as a meeting point between the entertainment and fashion industries. The red carpet is an iconic symbol of Hollywood, and any of us would be thrilled to make our red carpet debut. The iconic red carpet wouldn't be anything without the iconic looks celebrities and their stylists have brought to it. We have Razorback Reels reporter Ani Olivias to walk us through some Oscars history. Thanks so much. After almost 100 years of the Academy Awards, we've seen some pretty amazing outfits on the red carpet. Let's take a look at my personal favorite iconic outfits from the Oscars through the years. Starting off in no particular order, we have the, the yellow dress designed by Pierpaolo Picciali, a Valentino worn by Zendaya at the 2021 Awards. The look dubbed Neon Dream by stylist La Roche was paired with over $6 million worth of yellow diamonds from Bulgari. Roche says that the look was inspired by a yellow jumpsuit Cher wore on an episode of the Sunny and Cher show in the late 70s. Speaking of Cher, you know I have to include her daring black fe feather look from the 1986 Oscars. In an interview with Vogue in 2019, Cher revealed that the look was a clapback at the Academy who were allegedly doubting how serious of an actress she was due to her penchant for risque looks. Next on my list is the famous Marjan Pajoski swan dress worn by Bjork in 2001. The Icelandic singer was already known for her outlandish looks, but this one certainly shocked the, the public at the time. The dress included white tulle in the image of a swan with a crystal encrusted body stocking and was even paired with eggs as the singer laid as she walked the red carpet. Okay, this last one is probably my favorite of all time because just look at how stunning Mila Kunis is in this dress. Though she didn't win any awards for her performance in the Black Swan at the 2011 Oscars, this lilac El Saab design did have Kunis on many best dress lists that year. That's all for me. I'm reporter Anais Olivas, and thanks for tuning in. 
What did you think about these looks that we were just shown? I think they're all just historic. I think I agree. Which one is yeah. your favorite? Do you have one? I don't know. It's hard to choose. I mean, I feel like all of them have different appearances and they all make statements that are completely different. So it's hard to pick just one. I, I think say. I agree. I'm just yeah. going to share my opinion really fast. I love the Zendaya one, but I think she can rock absolutely anything. That's fair. <laughs> the fashion of this year's hottest stars was coupled with a new carpet debut. Here to break down all of the looks on the champagne carpet, we have Razorback Reels reporter Madison Smith in studio. One of my favorite parts of any award show is watching the celebrities walk the red carpet, and I like to pick out my favorite and least favorite outfits of the night. However, this year for the first time, the celebrities walk the champagne carpet at the Oscars. Starting off with my least favorite nights or looks for the night. While I love a man in pink, Dwayne Johnson's attempt at the pink, pink, tuxedo, pink tuxedo trend excuse me, was a massive fail. The Black Adam star described his Dulce & Gabbana jacket as ballet pink. Valentino is usually one of my favorite dress designers for dresses on the red carpet, but Florence Pugh's dress this year was nowhere near my favorite. I can see the idea, but the execution just isn't there, and the co color combo is a little rough for my liking. This next one was more or less disappointing. Kate Blanchett seems to be heading to the office in her blue and black Louis Vuitton gown. If I was nominated for be Best Actress, I would be wearing something with more to it. But on to my favorites. My best friend would definitely disagree with me on this one, but Allison Williams looked absolutely stunning in her Jim Batista Valley dress. And I'm not just saying that because I love pink. Jim Batista Valley strikes again with one of my favorites, Sandra O. Oh. The turning red star looked absolutely gorgeous in the yellow gown. And my absolute favorite dress of the night is by far Rihanna. She has not stopped serving since the Super Bowl, and her dress made her look elegant and dark at the same time. Overall, I love the change to the champagne carpet, and at the end of the day, everyone looked absolutely stunning. Reporting for Razorback Reels, I'm Madison Smith. Let's go back to the desk with Elena and Riley. Thank you, Madison. I really did not like Florence Pugh's look, and I love really? Florence Pugh, and I think she is beautiful, but I do not. I think I really agree with Madison that the silver, I, it was like, I don't know. I wasn't a fan. Not it was giving like space suit, but yeah. not in like oh, a fun way. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Out. I think Rihanna just looks amazing. I love that Rihanna is using her baby bump as, as an accessory. She did it in it's the Super so Bowl. Cute. I really am just such a fan of Rihanna overall. Mm -hmm. She wins, in my opinion. I agree. This year. Sandra O's look was also amazing. And again, I'm really biased because I am just obsessed with Sandra O. Oh, no, but fair. I loved <laughs> her dress. Yes, definitely. All right, coming up, we'll be talking about some live musical performances that brought life into nearly four four hours of the show. Stick around after the break to hear more. Oscar for Best Original Song has been a staple of the award ceremony since the 70 Academy Awards, since the 70th Academy Awards, excuse me, <laughs> in 1934. This award is given to songwriters who produce original songs for major motion pictures. This award is accompanied by a live performance of each number throughout the night, a tradition that began with the 18th Academy Awards. In studio, we have Razorback Reels reporter Lily Barcroft to tell us all about this year's nominees and their performances. The Oscars were full of live music this past Sunday from Rihanna, Lady Gaga, Sophia Carson, and the cast of RRR, the stage was full of stars. I'm Lily Barcroft, and today I'm going to show you all the magic of the music in the movies. I don't know about y'all, but I am a sucker for a big musical number. The cast of RRR performed their original song, Natu Natu, and it was so fun to watch. The movie took home Best Original Song, making it the first Indian film to win an Oscar. Talk about a big win. Sophia Carson performed the power ballad, Applause, from the movie Tell It Like a Woman. She was accompanied by the writer of the song, Diane Warren, a 14-time Oscar nominee. I personally loved the string orchestra on stage while she sang. Now, Lady Gaga did something nobody was expecting. She actually performed. The store was 
originally unable to perform due to scheduling conflicts, but ended up performing the hit Hold My Hand from the Top Gun movie at the show. She did a stripped back performance wearing black jeans and a black t-shirt, unlike some of her previous performances where she wore a meat dress and an alien suit. I loved hearing her sing this song so simply. This performance reminded me of when she sang Shallow with Bradley Cooper. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a Crazy Gaga performance, but it was so cool to see her do a simple show. Last and certainly not least, the queen herself, Rihanna. She sang her hit song, Lift Me Up, from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. The powerful song was backed by a chorus of singers and an orchestra. I personally wondered when she would sing this song live, since she didn't include it in her Super Bowl halftime show, but this performance was well worth the wait. Personally, I'm waiting for Rihanna to release more music, and it seems like she's slowly re-entering the music world again. Maybe she's starting a new era. <laughs> I would love, love, love to say that Rihanna takes the cake for the best performance of the night, even if she didn't win the Oscar for Lift Me Up. Overall, I would say this year's performances showed up and showed out. Each one gave a jaw-dropping performance and heartfelt, too. This has been Lily Barcroft with Razorback Reels. Thanks, Lily. Okay, these performances could not have been more different from each other. Wait, really? Like, Lady Gaga's original one is like... You know, you know her as like the crazy one who mm -hmm. does all these really fun and you know unique performances. Oh, but for sure. I loved her performance this year. She didn't wear her makeup, or at least it looked like you know natural yeah, makeup. No. Okay. <laughs> but she had her hair braided back into a bun. She was wearing like jeans and a black shirt, like super chill, super su simple, super simple. Which honestly, I like that because you can hear how amazing her voice is. Oh, of course. I also feel like it really draws a lot more attention to her. And I mean, she yeah. knows how to market. She knows that this <laughs> juxtaposes sure. her original look are her typical looks and I think she knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What about Rihanna's performance? I think Rihanna's performance this time was like completely an opposite of what she did at the Super Bowl. I Which, think I, I mean, agree. Literally from all white kind of mm -hmm. red to black. Yes, <laughs> so for I thought sure. it was definitely a cool um, kind of transition being on two of the world's biggest stages I guess yeah well I was about to bring that yeah. up that Rihanna has really really been killing the game recently, recently especially <laughs> since she hasn't been like doing that many things in the last few years right I feel like she's really been focusing on her beauty company and now she is really pulling through coming back into the music world and mm -hmm. I wonder if she's going to come back with a banging album I'm I really hope hoping so. that's the case We're all hoping I, agree. I feel like Lady Gaga needs some new music sometime too yeah I fully <laughs> agree did you ever watch a star is born I love a star is born Born. That I hope so. It makes me cry. It every makes me time cry see every it. single time. But it's because too. her voice is so amazing. It is I amazing. Like that's what they were kind of trying to do. Like she was saying, Bradley Cooper was kind of like her duet. Yeah. But this is her way of bringing back that natural voice, but in the Oscars, which is yes. a little bit bigger. <laughs> All right, coming up, we will be visiting our favorite moments over the nearly 100 year history of the Academy Awards. Please stay tuned. With nearly 100 years of history, the Academy Awards has cemented itself as a pillar of pop culture. Originally broadcast by radio beginning in 1929, the award ceremony has undergone numerous changes in the past nine decades. The first televised Oscars took place in 1953, and over the next 40 years, broadcast would sh shift between NBC and ABC. The newest category to be added was the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, which debuted in 2001. In total, 3,140 Oscar statuettes have been awarded. Obviously, these moments in Oscars history are important advancements in cinema and award ceremony, but not all Oscars moments are so historical. The show is his notorious for iconic and often funny moments. We have Connor Marsh in studio to unpack some iconic Oscars moments. Thanks, Riley. With the conclusion of another Oscars on Sunday, I thought it would be fun to look back at some memorable moments from the past. Here are my top five favorite Oscars moments. Kicking off the list, it's the slap heard around the world from the 2022 Oscars. This one's still pretty fresh on everyone's mind, Chris Rock getting slapped by Will Smith. And over a G.I. Jane joke? Come on, Will, everyone was laughing. 
By the way, Chris Rock finally spoke out about this on his new Netflix comedy special where he said that Jada Pinkett Smith hurt Will way more than the slap hurt him. Moving on, it's the 2017 Oscars when La La Land was mistakenly announced as the winner of Best Picture. At the time, it felt like awards shows announcers were on a bit of a bad streak. I mean, anyone remember the Steve Harvey Miss Universe debacle one year earlier? And the looks on everyone's faces are priceless. I hate that Moonlight got its moment taken away because it really did deserve the Oscar that year, but at least we got to witness this moment. Up next, we have the Ellen DeGeneres selfie that took the internet by storm in 2014. Ellen tweeted the picture, which gained a lot of attention online. It was even the most retweeted post on the platform at one point with 2.8 million retweets. And what a cast of celebrities. There's Ellen in the middle with a baby Bradley Cooper, Angelina Jolie, Lupita Nyong'o and her brother Peter, Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, and or excuse me, Meryl Streep, Jennifer Lawrence, Channing Tatum, and Jared Leto on the side there. It's crazy how much impact this selfie had in 2014. Not only did it break the record for most retweets, but it even caused the popularity of the selfie stick, if anyone remembers that. Safe to say, it's one for the history books. Taking it all the way back to the year 2000, we have South Park creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone's red carpet looks. That year, Blame Canada from the South Park movie was up for best original song. Now, for those who know Parker and Stone, award shows are not their thing. So they decided to show up under the influence wearing custom gowns that had caused waves at previous award shows. Parker is sporting a recreation of Jennifer Lopez's iconic Versace dress for the Grammys, along with Stone going with Gwyneth Paltrow's Ralph Lauren gown for the 1999 Oscars. South Park didn't take home the Oscar that year, but Parker and Stone were high on life. Finally, we've arrived at my all-time favorite Oscars moment. From the 2013 Academy Awards, the winner for Best Actress is announced and Jennifer Lawrence comes out on top. She walks on stage to accept her award and she falls, with one of the most graceful falls I've ever seen. Her backstage interview also makes this moment for me. I mean, she responded to an interviewer with, sorry, I just took a shot. Jennifer has always been one of my favorites. I've been re-watching The Hunger Games on Netflix and she killed it as Katniss. But this Oscars cemented her as a legend in my book. Well, there you have it, my top five favorite Oscars moments. Reporting for Razorback Reels, I'm Connor Marsh. Thanks, Connor. What was your favorite iconic moment from the Oscars? Okay, Jennifer Lawrence. It's such a good <laughs> she one. She might just be my favorite person ever, honestly. I fully agree. Have you seen like the compilations online right now of all yes, of her funny uh, moments? She's in so the funny. Fall, she handles that so well. No, I would she like, does. literally be bright red in the face. Like, wouldn't know what to do with my, um, myself if I I wouldn't either. I would be Oscars, so shocked. I'd be like, what the heck? I would be so stressed out. What would out. you say yours would be? I think my favorite was probably last year whenever Chris mm -hmm. Rock slapped Will Smith. That really was Slap a slap heard around, around the world. The world. <laughs> I mean, they're right. That was just so funny to witness live. And then I actually got to come back here and anchor reels that day and talk about how Chris Rock slapped Will Smith. And it was just <laughs> like hilarious. Yeah. I just, it was one of those things that was just so surreal and just seemed so silly, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, Another iconic moment, and this is iconic and I think maybe not the best way, but the Moonlight and La La Land mm -hmm. was such a debacle. And Can Connor imagine. is right. They were on a really bad streak as far as announcing at, uh, excuse me, announcing at awards shows. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one was just really rough. Yeah, it was really rough. And I mean, have you seen the thing about Jimmy Kimmel and how he was making a comment about the Will Smith and Chris? Yes, Rock thing? I did. He brought him back up again. No, I he feel totally like they did. kind of almost thrive off of those funny moments because they make it go more viral. Oh, they the totally Oscars. do. I feel like the whenever he was slapped, it really was just kind of this resurgence and a lot of people watched a lot of stuff about the Oscars this last year, whenever that might not typically be in their wheelhouse. Right. It was all over social media. It was hard to ignore it. Yes, it was everywhere. Um, but that is all the time that we have for this special edition of Razorback Reels. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Razorback underscore Reels. I'm Elena Thompson. And I'm Riley Atkinson. Have a great night.